What's up guys and girls, welcome to a, another video. Now in this one, I am going to be looking at bike insurance, or should I say cycle insurance. It's gonna be an in-depth video and I'm gonna show you everything that you need to know. Now I am very techie and I am very analytical, so I've put those skills to good use. And what I've done is I've gone through research bike insurance, very, very granular in lots of detail. And what I wanted to do is explain all of that in this video so that I arm you guys and girls with the knowledge. And when you have have the knowledge you can make more informed decisions that way you'll be able to answer questions like do i need bike insurance in this video i'm also going to be covering the most frequently asked questions about cycle insurance i'll look at what is actually covered i'll also be comparing the top three bike insurers which is very interesting so do stay tuned for that i will then look at the costs and what affects the cost and then i will give my final thoughts on bike insurance as a whole. I have left timestamps so you can quickly jump to the part of the video that best suits you. I should probably mention that all of the information in these videos is from my own research. None of it is from the companies themselves. I'm also not sponsored by any of these companies. So now that I've insured myself against what I'm gonna say in this video, let's get stuck in. As we all know, I'm not about wasting people's time. So let's start with the most frequently asked questions. So are you covered if your bike is locked up away from home? Yes, you are, but only if you use a lock that is approved by the insurer. Is your bike insured at your house? Yes, but there are rules that apply. If it's inside your house, then that's fine. But when it's outside the house in a garage, for example, or a shed, that shed will need to be locked. It may be that you would need to lock the bike up as well inside the shed. So do check the small print of the company that you go for. Can you insure a bike that you have purchased through the cycle to work scheme? Yes, you can. And that will not affect the amount you have to pay either. Does your insurance policy cover you when the bike is on the plane? Now, that is a good question and it took me a bit of research. Long and short answer is yes and no. It does depend on the policy, but some do cover that. You just have to specify that you want that. Is your bike covered when it is locked outside your work? Good question, people. Firstly, good job riding to work. Secondly, from my research, what I can tell is if your bike is locked up for more than 12 hours in one place, then it's not covered after those 12 hours. So if you go to work, lock it up for seven and a half hours, eight hours, then it should be covered. Again, do check with the cycle insurance company. If you make a claim, does that affect your premium? Now, from what I can tell and my research, that will not affect your premium like it does with cars. Obviously, if you make a claim with cars, your premium goes up and it's harder. There is also no, no claim. So if you don't make a claim, your insurance doesn't go down the following year. So it's pretty much set. Can you only insure new bikes? No, you can insure any bike, new or secondhand. Is there any excess on the bike insurance policy? Yes, there normally is. So you will have to pay a fee up front in order to make the claim. Does cycle insurance cover you to race? The answer to that is yes and no, it does vary. Now we will cover that in more detail later on in this video as it does affect your premium quite a bit, which we'll be able to see the price difference. Is your bike covered around the world? Again, this is policy to policy. You can specify that you want worldwide coverage. Some companies do, some companies don't. If your bike is left unattended and it is stolen and it is not locked up, can you make a claim? No, you can't. The long and short is wherever your bike is, it needs to be locked up with an approved lock from the insurance company. And lastly, are you covered if you are a bike courier? The answer to that one is no. So there you go, they are the most frequently asked questions about cycle insurance, bike insurance. If you have any other information that's gonna help people, please do leave that in a comment down below this video. Next up, is cycle insurance, is bike insurance compulsory? The answer to that is no, it is not compulsory in any way, shape or form. It is completely up to you as a cyclist if you would like to have bike insurance. It's worth noting that bikes are covered on house insurance if you specify. So if you have specified and you're only worried about it in your house, then it may already be covered and cheaper to do it through your home insurance. Next up, how is your bike replaced if you do make a claim? Now it may seem like it's just, I have this bike and I will replace it with this bike, which is true to some degree. However, there's some details in there to be careful of. 
and I found a good bit of information on the Pedalshaw website, which I'm just going to read. For bikes that can be readily replaced with a new one or a similar model from the shops, the value should be the undiscounted replacement cost, including VAT, from a reputable dealer at the time you apply. What I gathered from that is it is like for like, but not like for like at the time you bought the bike. So if you bought a £5,000 bike five years ago and you are putting a quote in now for bike insurance, you will put the value of that bike as its current value now. So you will say my bike's worth £1,500, for example. That way, when you have a claim, hopefully you never have a claim, you never have an accident and we're all nice and safe. But if you do, then they will replace the current value of the bike. So they will get you a bike for £1,500. So what is actually covered? Now we are getting into the juicy details, people. Do stay with me. First up, your bike and your kit. So this is actually the bike, any accessories on the bike, and also the kit that you're wearing, things like helmets, GPSs, clothing, anything that's on the bike, and that is all covered. That will all be covered if it's stolen or if you crash and it breaks. So that's point number one, that's very internal, that's everything you own, that's all yours, right? They will replace your stuff. Secondly, let's look at personal liability, or to put it simply, anything that isn't yours. Let's take the worst case scenario, you are riding a 12,000 pound Pinarello F12, as you do, through the centre of London and you crash into the side of a Bugatti Chiron, right? And it's your fault. You cause £20,000 worth of damage to the Bugatti. Your bike is totaled, your frame's cracked, your back wheel's like that, all buckled, your front wheel's just gone rolling down the street. That is a total of £32,000 worth of damage that you will have to pay for. Now, unless you've got really deep pockets, that's a hell of a lot of money and it's going to be hard to pay for. It's going to be hard to cover those costs. This is where personal liability come in, which is also called public liability or third party. And this covers you in the same way that your car insurance does. It covers you if you do crash into a car, for example, which is the worst case scenario and probably the most costly scenario for us cyclists. So I guess these cycle insurance companies are going to give you peace of mind if something like that ever did happen. Thirdly, we have racing, which covers all types of bike racing. It also covers triathlons, for example. Now, this isn't covered by default. This is an extra, and it does depend on the insurer you're going with, and that can jump the cost quite a lot, which we'll look at in a minute. If you are racing, then it's important to do some quotes with different companies, but you can get that covered. Lastly, personal injury. Now, that is as it sounds. Basically, if you have a crash and you break your arm and you can't work, for example, or you break a leg, there is basically a value on those injuries and you will get paid that amount. So for example, if you come off your bike and you hit your mouth and you break a couple of teeth, you may get a thousand pounds from your insurer. Not the best thing to think about peeps, but it's something that is in there. So those are the four main things that actually affect the premium, affect the price that you pay for cycle insurance. And that is why I wanted to cover those. It's also probably the most common question of what is covered. Now that we have that, let's move on and do a comparison of three of the biggest cycle insurance companies. Now, the reason I am comparing three different bike insurance companies is to give balance to the conversation. I wanted to check out different companies and make sure that what they are saying all align. I've gone through and done a quote on each site. I've read through the small print, five pages of PDF on one of them. I read through it to give you this information, peeps. So if that's not worth a subscribe, I don't know what is. So the companies I chose to look at were number one, Pedalshaw, number two, Lacquer, I believe it is pronounced, and number three is Bike Mo or Bicmo. Not sure how it's pronounced either. These are ones that I've heard come up in conversations with my cycling pals. And in a true nerdy fashion, I've created an Excel doc just for ease where I collated all the information. So let's look at that. So you can see here, we've got what's included on the left. We also have the companies at the top. So Lacquer, Pedalshaw and Bike Mo or Bic Mo, I think it actually is. Firstly, we've got Theft Away From Home. They all cover that. Theft from the home, they all cover that, no problem. Accidental damage, so accidentally crashing or knocking your bike over, that is covered as well by all of them. Breakdown cover. Now, interestingly, I couldn't see that on Pedalshaw. I did look through the small print. There was five pages, I may have missed it, but I couldn't see breakdown cover. And breakdown cover 
is actually to get you home. So say you are 100 miles from home, uh, that will cover you to get the train, etc. up to a certain value, bear in mind. Clothing cover, yes, that is covered by all three of these bike insurers. Now we have covered outside of the UK. Now lacquer here, we have NA, that's because I couldn't even see the option. There wasn't an option. On pedal short and bike mo, we did have the option, so I've added that in here. Racing cover, Lacquer also didn't have that anywhere that I could see. Pedal Shore does have that and Bike Mode does have that. I haven't ticked it there and there's a reason for that and that is because it jumps the cost up massively with Bike Mode to put racing cover in there. Whereas Pedal Shore, it wasn't as much but I'll show you that later when we look at prices. We have Public Liability Cover. Again, Lacquer, NA, couldn't see that anyway. Pedal Shore, yes. Bike Mode, yes. Both up to one million pounds. Yes, I repeat one million pounds i mean if you can do one million pounds worth of damage on a bike then you must be the hulk riding through london next up contract so can you leave at any time lacquer you can leave any time it's month to month big mode pedal sure they are contracted for 12 months deterioration and wear i put that in there because i thought it might be part of it but it's not so obviously if your chain rings are worn down they're not going to cover you to just replace them so there you go that is a comparison of three big uk cycle insurance companies it was interesting but what is more interesting is the price so let's look at that now so firstly to do this quote i put the exact same details into each one so i put my giant defy advanced in at 800 pounds bike clothing value 200 accessories 500 pounds and i put my location as stratford now bear in mind with insurance companies normally the location matters because the crime rates in your area will affect your premium same with car insurance first up we have lacquer now the prices change for lacquer monthly based on how many claims i have but for the quote it was between 10 pounds 54 and 14 pound 84 a month so it will vary between that price i guess month to month now it's worth noting that there is no public liability insurance with lacquer that i could see next up we have pedal shore now for pedal shore this first quote has no personal injury it does have personal liability so it covers other people or other things that you break and it does have race cover as well and this was 133 pounds 52 per year or 11 pounds and 13p per month so not bad there to see what it was with the injury i also done another quote so this quote is with personal injury the silver package they have three different package so this is the mid-range package with personal liability and with race cover and that turned out at 21 pounds 20 per month or 254 pounds 35p per year so there is a significant jump when you add in the personal injury insurance lastly we have bike mode now for this quote i didn't have race cover but i did have public liability but i didn't have injury okay so this was £9.60 a month or £115.20 per year. Now I also done one with race cover and with personal injury and that jumped the price up to £28.27 a month or £339.24 a year. As you can see the price varies quite a lot depending on what you want to cover. Those four points that I mentioned earlier in the video which is your bike and your kit personal liability, personal injury and racing will affect the premium the most and it can jump it up as much as £10 a month depending on which insurer you wanted to go with. Now it is worth noting that there is a discount for multi-bikes on all three of these cycle insurance companies. They offered a 50% discount on the second bike. So that's a significant saving and if you are serious about cycling then it's likely that you have more than one bike. I did actually test this because I didn't want to just take their word for it and I done this on pedal shore and what I done is a quote for no personal accident or injury but to include racing and two bikes was £163.63 per year or £13.64 a month compared to £133.52 for one bike 
So actually it was less than 50%, it was actually around a 30 pound increase. So not bad. And that was to add the same bike again. So another bike that was worth 800 pounds. So two bikes that were worth 800 pounds cost 163 pounds 63 a year or 13 pounds 64 a month. Quotes, I kind of realized, you know, how much is this quote gonna vary depending on the type of bike that you have. So I've looked at how the bike type actually affects the premium and it turns out the bike type doesn't matter it doesn't matter what type of bike it is what matters is the value of the bike it could be a mountain bike worth five thousand pounds it could be a road bike worth 500 pounds as you can see a 1000 pound bike here at the top would be 155 pounds 28p a year to insure and then at the bottom, the other end, the most extreme end of the spectrum, we have 10,000 pound bike, would cost 893 pounds and 16p to insure for the year. So there you go, they are the prices. And I thought I'd give you a quick roundup and give you some tips and tricks. Number one, if you are looking to race, then Pedalshaw, I think is definitely the cheapest. If you don't wanna race, but you do want personal injury cover, then I think Bicmo is actually the cheapest, or one of the best. It's very close with pedal shore, but it's, it's there or thereabouts. If you wanted flexibility and a quick win just to cover your bike, then lacquer is actually quite good. It's not that cheap for what you get, but it is flexible, so you can cancel it month to month. So overall, the prices are kind of similar with these three bike insurance companies. The price varies depending on what you want to do on your bike and what you want covered. The big question is, if I had to choose one, which one would I suggest? And I would actually go with Pedalshaw. Now the reason I would go with Pedalshaw is because I like the multi-bike discount, it come out well, and I also would like to cover racing because that is a potential possibility later down the line. So I'd like to have that in there. So there you go, guys and girls. That is the end of this video that covers everything you need to know about cycle insurance. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have, smash the subscribe button. I have plenty more videos planned, lined up. Leave any comments below, any questions you may have. Until the next one, self-love and safe riding. Stay insured.